I'm making vermicelli with chicken and onions and we have the chicken. I've removed the skin from mine today. Onions, oil, olives, uh, bay leaf, maggi cubes, vinegar, black pepper, mustard, salt, plum tomatoes, butter, which we'll use for the vermicelli itself for there. I've cut the onions this um, size, but you can cut them like this if you wish. I put the chicken in there, bay leaves, mustard, one maggie, a lot of black pepper. The olives. I'm going to put in some of the brine olives. Tablespoon of the plum tomatoes. A bit of salt and vinegar. Two to three tablespoons. And a tablespoon of oil. Now you do this just to minimize the pickling process of the chicken, which is in the whole marinade. Now just mix through. And garlic, of course. I'm so sorry, I forgot to um, bring that out. Now cover and let it marinate for a minimum of 30 minutes. But then again, you can do it to marinate for as long as you want. A few hours, even overnight. I always leave in the fridge to marinate, even if I'm leaving it for 30 minutes. My marinade has been on for about 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm just going to start the cooking now. Just want to put in some oil. Now you just want to take out the chicken. Once oil is really hot, Now the onions. You can add a bit of heat if you want, some chilli, but I'm not doing it because of my children. I am frying this on high heat. That's the chicken there. These juices that start to run out of it, I'm just going to be adding it to the onions. It's been frying for about 15 minutes and I'm just going to fry it a little bit more, probably about 10 minutes more. Still on high heat as well. And do stir every three to four minutes. Now I'm going to put my two Maggie cubes. Now I add um, liquid. Now taste the salt. If it's um, okay, that's fine. If not, add a bit, another Maggi cube. The Maggi is really good here because um, it's it comes out dark, if you know what I'm saying. The, the sauce, that's why frying it um, till it gets really caramelized is also important because it's all in the color of the sauce. For me, I'm going to add a bit more black pepper and one more Maggi cube. Put your chicken in. Now I'm going to turn my high heat down to um, my lowest actually. And this will just allow the chicken to cook nicely. Release its flavor to the onion sauce. And we just wait for the oil to come all right up and that's when it's cooked. If you've watched my other videos, you'd know I'm not a fan of covering food when I'm cooking it. So. I'm not covering mine. If you wish to cover yours, just partially cover it. Um, it's been 10 minutes since I put in the chicken and I've just turned it round because you can see the chicken right up there. There's no sauce covering it, so that just gives it an even cooking time on both sides. It's now done. You are now going to need two bowls. I'll be putting the chicken and the onions here and most of the gravy in that little bowl.
Now we do the vermicelli. I showed you the butter earlier. This is because you can use butter rather than what I'll be using, which is the oil that I took out from the chicken I was cooking. So every time I use the oil, you can use butter instead. This is just a preference, really. So I've boiled some water in the kettle just to have it um, started quickly and we pour that in. It's already coming to the boil. Now I just put my colander in. If you have a steamer, obviously you're smarter than I am and more equipped. Now wait for it to start boiling rapidly before you put in the vermicelli and you're going to need a glass of water as well. Your oil or your butter. Now cover this and steam for 20 minutes. In your glass of water you just want to add some salt. Now you want to transfer this into a bowl so you can mix in some of the water from the glass. I'm going to add a third of that water and mix that. I have quite a bit of vermicelli so I've actually added a lot more water than I even thought. So I've added a two thirds of the glass and I've mixed it and I'm just going to put it back into the colander. Check the water and make sure you have enough to keep the steam quite um, going through to uh, speed up the cooking and um, the steaming process. And now just steam for 30 minutes this time. Now you just want to transfer again here and add some water and oil or butter. I'm going to add three to four tablespoons of this oil. I added five tablespoons, I'm just going to put it back here. Now just um, steam another 30 minutes. Now we're going to take it out again. Okay, I'm just going to leave it in the colander actually because it's nearly done so I think I can get away with it. I'm just going to add um, another third of a cup of that water and uh, another six, maybe seven tablespoons of this oil. Just mix that through. Don't forget the water in the pot. Um, this is my second time adding water. I did it um, the last time we took the steam off. And I just want that to come to the boil and I replace this. Now just the last um, steaming and this time I'm going to leave it for 45 minutes. It's been 20 minutes since I put it back on to steam for the last 40 for, to 45 minutes. And I'm just going to turn it over and then cover it back for the last 20 minutes. So this has been cooking for about two hours. Ignore the 34 minutes because that's the time I've been using to um, stir in the water oil. And also when I put in the water the last time, I needed to wait for it to come to boil. And um, usually when I make this, I'll be making the sauce as well. Uh, but today, because I was recording it for the YouTube channel, I made the sauce, then I made this, just so not to confuse anyone. But if you as well, uh, together I mean, whilst you're doing this, it's much easier and obviously less time consuming. So this is done now. Now this gravy, I'm going to be using it again, but what I'll do first is I'm just going to take out the oil that's left there. I need any more oil. I just mix through. <coughs>